the day that the Lord has made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. Hallelujah, hallelujah. To God be the glory for all the good things he's done in our lives. Hallelujah, praise the Lord. Love you. Not because of you, man. Come on now. Come on, lady. Look at this. The, the good Samaritan. I like the whole story. I want to get the points of the, the key points and components of that, story, that parable. Verse Luke 10, 25. And behold, a certain lawyer stood up and tempted him. See, this, this is somebody coming to test Jesus, not really trying to get an answer. Saying, Master, what shall I do to inherit eternal life? I think you need to key on that word. He's asking what he must do to inherit eternal life. He said it in verse 26, Jesus, what is written in the law? How read is that? And he answered and said, this is the lawyer, thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, with all thy strength, with all thy mind. And look at that word here, in thy neighbor as thyself. And Jesus said unto him in 28, and he said unto him, Thou answers right. Do this, and thou shalt live. See, even that Jesus basically quoted in the Old Testament, because the man said, What says the law? What readeth the law? To love the Lord thy God with all thy heart. Huh? And then the point of saying to love thy neighbor as thyself. And if you love yourself, as, as being a neighbor, if you love yourself. See, you say I love myself enough not to get into sin. You say I love myself enough not to put myself at risk. You said I love myself to be free from the things that bog me down and burden me and put yokes on me. He said, love your neighbors as he, you love yourself. It's golden rule, do unto others as you have others do unto you. He didn't ask you to get Google out. And he didn't tell you by loving your neighbor thyself that, think about, I like that too, think about it. If you're not sinning, then you're not, why would you, why would you tell somebody it was okay to sin? Or if you're not doing uh, transgressions, why would you say it's okay for somebody else to transgress? How's that love? Love thy neighbor thyself means the same things I'm talking about me trying to be delivered from. I'm going to help encourage you to be delivered from it too. And the deliverance is through Jesus Christ. Come on now. That's all I'm saying. It's so easy for somebody to hear these words and get and have the audacity to say what, have a problem with what God said. Because God said to love one another. Christ said to love one another. Because that scripture he was quoting from the Old Testament. He said, how read is the law? How read is the law? There was the law. Christians are not under the law. Because those people that was under the law could not fulfill the law. And why are you trying to put somebody back under the law? And why are you trying to use the port back to the law? They could not overcome the law. Not in their flesh. Because it was the law. The, 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 was weak in the flesh. It's the spirit that allows you to, to be delivered. That's what the scripture said. Let people know that. Let them know how to be delivered. Listen and do what Christ did. Follow the pattern of Christ. Show them the love of God. Because people see your hate, you hating the sin, but you're showing it toward the person. And if you show it to the person, then the person don't want to hear you. Jesus didn't show the hate toward the sinner. He didn't show hate to that woman caught in an act of adultery. He didn't show hate to the people that the fires and the he called sinners. He didn't do that. Why should you? Why should you? Do opposite what he told you to do. Think about it. I think that's very important for us. This is very important. And, and you know, I'm gonna break this up in segments, but man, I hope those who get to read this get a chance to sit there and follow this, 
follow the scriptures. Look at this in John 14, 17. Even the spirit of truth, who the world cannot receive. Listen, the world cannot receive. So if you can't receive the spirit of truth, you need to look and see whether you're in the world or you're in Christ. Because thou seest him not, neither knowest him. But you know him for what? He dwells with you and shall be in you. Who? The Holy Spirit. That's why we talk about the fruits of the Spirit. He said, I will not leave you comfortless. I will come to you. Who's coming? Jesus. How? Through the Holy Spirit. By the Holy Spirit. He said, yeah, a little while, the world sees me no more. But you see me. How do they see? He said, yeah, a little while, the world sees me no more. He talking about saying, the senses that people go by, they don't see me no more. But you see me. How? Through Jesus. By the, 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 the dwelling of the Holy Spirit. He said, because I live, you shall live also. At that day, you shall know that I, where? Am in my Father, and what? You in me, and I in you. He that keeps my, or he that has my commandments. Come on now. John 13, 34. He said, the new commandment I give you, you love one another. I said, I love you, that you also love one another. That is a commandment. That's not a suggestion. That is not telling you to go and be led by your emotion. That is telling you to go by his commandment. 21. He that has my commandments and keep them, and keep them, and keep them, he it is that loveth who? Me. So if you love Jesus, and Jesus said to love one another as a commandment, and therefore you show the love of Christ through the fact that you keep his commandment and not put his commandments down. Not sit there and try to find agreement with other people, because that's what we try to do, right? We try to find agreement from other people to sit there and follow their way instead of Christ's way, keeping their commandments instead of Christ's commandments. Christ said, he that has my commands, keep them, he it is that loveth me. Do I read again? I'll read again. Verse 21, John 14, 21. He that has my commandments and keep them, he it is that loveth me. And he that loveth me shall be loved of my father. Mm. And look, and I will love him. And I will manifest myself to him. If we love Christ, keep his commandments. His commandments is to love one another. His commandment was going to preach the gospel, the good news. He said that. Now, I know your flesh. See, our flesh love to go and point in somebody else's direction and put somebody else down and talk about somebody else and try to tell them they can overcome this and blame them for their sins instead of recognizing that they have strongholds in them. Let me come off this thing for a second. Because let me tell you something. Many of us, when we have sinned or sinning now, it's because of strongholds that are in us. Listen, most people, whether you're gay, whether you're an adulterer, whether you're a drunkard, whether you whatever you want to call it, those things are done because those are strongholds in a person's life and they need to help somebody need to preach the power of the deliverance of the, of the captivity through Jesus Christ, not through you, not through their own ability. And therefore, when somebody sin, you shouldn't look at them. You should look at the sin that's in them, in their flesh, but not them. You must love them. You must preach the gospel to them. You're supposed to help them understand how to be delivered, not sit there and, and, and hate them. See, that's what the problem is. And that's what people sit there and will stop listening to ministries like this because they think that, no, no, I don't want to hear that. I don't want to give the license to sin. When did you issue your license in the first place? And what authority have you to issue your license? You have no authority. You don't have authority to take it away either. Huh? And you know that too. But you know where the power comes from to be delivered 
from sin is through Jesus Christ. Allow the Holy Spirit to be the one that molds people, help people to be delivered. You too busy trying to blame the person instead of blaming the sin that's in them. Gee, Paul said, in my flesh dwelleth no good thing. So if you're trying to tell somebody to overcome sin through their flesh, you have already missed the boat. And you know you missed the boat. And you missed the boat all the time because you're sitting there blaming the person, putting another person down instead of understanding there's sin in the flesh. And Christ came to deliver us. From no thing. Listen what the scripture says. Instead of sitting there thinking that you can make somebody do something, be delivered in the flesh, and you know they can't. The weapons of warfare are not carnal, but mighty to God. To God for the pulling down of strongholds, casting in imagination, and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. The weapons of our warfare, give them the weapons. A lot of people, we talk about that in the message. Some people are not weapons qualified. Because we're not equipped to be weapons qualified. We mean weapons qualified. We're talking about being able to use the word of God as a weapon for the spiritual warfare that they're in. It's not a weapon to go against and put somebody down and to hurt their feelings and trash them. It's not a weapon to sit there and say, I'm not going to forgive you. It is not, because that's not, he said, you will forgive somebody. That's what the scripture says. Listen to me who I'm listening to this tape. And I know God is going to take care of whoever's listening. He meant for you to listen. If you're not listening, he ain't meant for you to listen. Or you allow your flesh to move away from what the truth is saying. I'm saying this. Go by the word of God. Follow the word of God. Understand the power of God. See, it's not your power. What's that one scripture said? Not by my might, not by my power, but the spirit of the Lord. Amen. So you, you, we really need to get to the point uh, of stand within the word of God. Amen? That's what, that's why that was the last scripture. And therefore, I'm going to close out. But I'm telling you, we're going to continue to focus on the fact that stay on message. Trust the word of God. Believe in him. You can't make people be delivered in, by their flesh. So why are you hating them? Because you plan, you Blaming them. Sin is in the flesh, saints. Sin is in your flesh. And that flesh is trying to get you to do things that you don't want to do and you shouldn't be doing. Those are strongholds and you got strongholds that you got to work on yourself. So therefore, you don't pick up stones because you got sin in your flesh. You know you got sin in your flesh. And you know you're struggling in things that people don't want, that you, other people can't see. The jealousy, the envy, the hate, the unforgiveness. Those things also need to be dealt with. So, and then dealing with things that God hates, so and discord among the brothers. Are y'all so are y'all so cardinal that you, you do that? Well, you know what? All I know is <laughs> you can't make me doubt it, and you can't stop me from preaching the gospel. So don't try to hinder the will of God to tell people what the message is. This be what you, he would call, would call the priest and teach the gospel. That's what the word says. He told us we have to forgive one another. He told us we have to love one another. And even the love of Christ constrained us to go and preach the gospel for our people. Snap it from the fire if you can, but you can't snatch everybody. But you can give them the word of God and let the Holy Spirit come in and let the Holy Spirit do it because he can do it better than you. That's all I want to be able to say. That's why I'm hoping that, that God had let thy will be done. Amen? All right. So I appreciate it. This is a Thursday night Bible study. And I felt it was important to show and talk about this and I'll talk about it again. Amen? God bless you. Let's pray. Father, I thank you for this opportunity when we come to worship and fellowship with you. I pray, Heavenly Father, that this message will touch and reach those who need to hear it. Equip them to do the work of the ministry. Equip me, glory to God, to do the work of the ministry. We thank you for all you're doing. I give you praise, glory, and honor. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen, amen, amen. So we'll see you Sunday.
if you so like to attend. Glory to God. But you know what? I just want you to attend somewhere. I want you to pray somewhere. I want you to study the word of God somewhere. And I want you to be a living witness, an ambassador for Christ. And those of you that want to live by the Old Testament, the Old Testament saint, you go do your thing. I just know that I can't. I, I'm going to tell you right now, uh-uh. You, you, you won't get me. I ain't going to lie to you. I am not around. I like what people, pe I mean, Paul said, this one thing, I, he said, I have not yet attained, but this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching and pressing for those things out before. Now, by fact, if you want to, I can show that on the scripture too. We'll catch it next time. The wild line is, no, I have not yet apprehended. I have not yet arrived. And I know, you know what? I know that everybody that may hear this message, you have not arrived either. And you better focus on the things that you got to work on. And you pray for those that have things to work on. And you preach and teach the gospel that he called you to do. The good news of deliverance. The good news of mercy and grace. The good news made to come boldly to the throne of God. That's what he's given us. He's given us inheritance. Join the in Christ Jesus. We are the children of God. And we need to love one another because it's a commandment, not a suggestion. We are not, I repeat, we're not endorsing, we're not telling people to do what they want to do. We tell them to be let Jesus be Lord of their life. And if I'm more confident if he's being Lord of their life, if he's being Lord of my life, then he would lead me and guide me to the right directions. I'm not changing right away. But I know if I stay with him and continue his word, and that's what you want to encourage people. You don't want to run people from the church so that they don't get into the word. And that's what some of y'all do. I can't, you know, one of my friends said, you just can't keep on sending. When you, when is you going to stop? When are you going to stop? And how are you going to stop? On your own ability? Or would you at least please stay in the word of God yourself? Just stay in the word and you keep on sinning. But I guarantee if you stay in this word, you will stop some of the things that hold you back. Don't let the people lost that you can't even survive by the law. You can survive by the word. Faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God, son. Friend, brother, sister, faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. And that power and the anointing for deliverance Come from Christ. Come from the Holy Spirit. Come from the Father in heaven. He gave us a way. Let's go by the way. Stop trying to do it a man's way. You're not going to get there. And if you get mad to hear it, think about it. I want you to leave with this. If you get upset about the commandment to love one another, please pray to God and ask, Lord, why am I upset about your commandment to say love one another? You, please, pray for that. And listen, I am not saying do what you want to do. I can't stop people from doing what they want to do. But I can encourage people to do the things that God called us to do. We study the Spirit of Allow Allowing to be led by the Holy Spirit. That I can do. At least, like I say, I can't make them, but I can ask them. But I'm not asking people. <laughs> You're not asking people to go and commit adultery, go and commit fornication, go ahead and be where you're straight or, I mean, where you want to be a homosexual. You're not asking people to do that. But you are saying, God loves you. God loves you. He came into the world. He gave his life so that we could be saved and not perish. And he said in that John, that, let's, matter of fact, let me see if I can bring that up. <laughs> because I think that's important for all of us to remember the fact that I bring it over here. Let me, let me bring it up to you. He said here in John 3.16, what he said right here. Let's look at the whole thing on that. John 3.16, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believes in him shall not perish, but an everlasting life. Keep reading. For God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him, what? Might be saved. He that believes in him is not condemned, 
But he that believeth is not is condemned already because he has not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. And this is the condemnation. The light has come into the world and men love darkness rather than light because their deeds were evil. For everyone that does his evil hates the light. We know that. Neither comes to the light, we know that, lest his deeds should be reproved. But he that does his truth, listen, truth, the word of God, preaching the word of God, teaching the word of God, studying the word of God. He that does his truth comes to the light, that his deeds may be manifest, that they are wrought, molded, shaped in God. See, that's what we're trying to tell you, man is the fact is that those people that we call and want to hate and condemn, instead of pointing to them to come to the light, see, because we know, listen, we already know, those who don't want to come to the light are condemned already. Those who don't want to, they, their deeds are evil, they want to stay in darkness, we know that. We should encourage people to come to the light so that their deeds will be manifested in rough shape and by God, and you. See, we, for some reason, we, we caught that. You know, Spanish Inquisition. They said, go ahead and kill them. The Dark Ages. Huh? The Spanish, the, the, the Salem witchcraft. Let's go burn them up. We, we see, it's, we love to constitute back to the things of flesh and work of flesh, but we kill it and shed it in his blood. And now we're doing it verbally. I'm going to tell you, man, I, I'm going to stay in Christ. Because it's not what you say, what you believe, and how you feel. It's what the Word says. And the Word says, love one another. Amen? God bless you. And I will check you when I check you. All right? Bye-bye. <laughs>